Hey friends, welcome back. Today I actually wanted to talk about Azure AD or Active Directory and Microsoft Entra ID. But in full transparency, today has been an incredibly busy day for me and I really want to hit my goal of getting this video up and recorded for you guys. So I'm going to take you with me. Let's go and get a coffee. I haven't eaten, so I might first grab something to eat and then I'm going to come back here and then we're going to talk about this topic. So let's go. So many of you have actually asked me about the eye situation and I'm gonna stop here and then I'm gonna show you a little bit of what it looked like. So, I mean, it definitely is getting better, but I wouldn't say we're there yet. The discoloration is definitely real at the moment. So I'm hoping that we're gonna get better after a while. Okay, so let me put you down over here and then we can chat. Many people have actually been super confused about the difference between Azure AD and Intra AD. And in reality, these are two completely different and actually very unique situations. So Azure AD uses like kind of your authentication protocols like LDAP, LDAP S, etc. And then Intra AD is more of a modern authentication type platform okay but let me get on to making the coffee and then we are gonna go back to my desk and talk about this okay i paused you flipped the camera came back to my desk and now we can start and don't worry i also do have the coffee right here. So let's get into it. All right, first let's talk a little bit about Active Directory. Now Active Directory has been used for years. It was developed by Microsoft and it's basically a platform for authorization, authentication and directory services. It gave the basic capabilities for administrators to grant access or to give permissions or to control permissions to different IT information assets, let's call it that light. But it this could have included access to printers, access to users, computers, and other devices that you may have had. Oh, and also not to forget access to applications. That's super kind of a really important one. But Active Directory was basically, it was that platform, you know, like you have your domain, you have your domain controllers, you have your kind of one PDC, primary DC, and then you have other domain controllers. This might depend on region, function, or there's various other reasons why you had these different DCs. And DCs were the bane of kind of vulnerability management and patch management people's lives because it's always like if you need to patch the PDC like it's a nightmare and it's an issue right so Active Directory I work in the cloud right so these days like I see it as kind of the legacy directory and identity service and now we want to kind of move things to Intra ID it introduced some really good benefits I mean we were able to now centrally manage users manage devices and manage authentication we were able to set up this hierarchical structure of kind of access inside of the domain and inside of the directory we were able to control authentication and authorization and we did this using various protocols. It introduced the use of using the lightweight directory protocol, LDAP, LDAP-S, Berberos and then DNS as well. And then I think probably one of the biggest things is that it introduced group policy management. So this is the ability to manage things like security policies across multiple assets in this group policy management structure. Now, as part of the components that's kind of included with Active Directory, there were multiple components actually. So if you think about, you had the directory services, you had the GPOs, group policy objects, you had the group catalogs. Then later we went further into a couple of other things like the ADFS, so Azure Active Directory Federation Services. I think, don't quote me on this, Google it. And then from there, we also had Active Directory Lightweight Directory 
directory services as well. So there were many services and components that were introduced as the Active Directory and the Identity Services environments evolved. With the introduction of aspects like ADFS, we were able to see different services from different organizations suddenly communicate with things internal to our organization, or maybe you started seeing the introduction of like a SaaS based web proxy. And then we use ADFS to authenticate our users via that web based proxy. That was really the first introduction of lifting up the identity services beyond only your own core but moving that into some kind of cloud consumed platform. And then from here, as we started seeing the cloud adoption becoming more and more rapid, then we started seeing more and more consumption of Azure Active Directory, right? So Azure Active Directory actually introduced a whole different modernized way of authentication. So think OpenID, think OAuth, that was kind of the authentication mechanisms that were now used by the cloud native Azure Active Directory. But but inside of Azure, you also have the option, like what we see today as the PDC primary domain controllers and things that use legacy Active Directory, you are also able to move those into the cloud as kind of a directory service. So this is Azure Domain Services, right? Azure Active Directory Domain Services, so ADDS. And with that, what we couldn't modernize yet, we were able to extend that into the cloud. But I mean, these days, there's so much confusion between Azure Active Directory or Entra ID and then Active Directory, which was kind of the older version. But there's a couple of big differences between the two. One starting with the fact that Active Directory used very different protocols and a very, what we now deem a legacy type of authentication, where it used Kerberos, it used Intel M protocols, it relied on the LDAP and LDAP S protocols to function, etc. versus where Entra ID uses more modernized type of authentication mechanism. So let's get into Entra ID. All right, now what is Entra ID? Entra ID is actually Microsoft Identity Services Platform and Entra ID has been built to make sure that you can have identity services in the cloud and extend that to your on-prem services so that you can secure access into applications, devices, etc. So pretty much sounds the same like Active Directory, but it's not. So with Entra ID, we saw the security evolution really skyrocket. Well, to use single sign-on to sign on to thousands of cloud-based applications as well as on-premise applications. As long as it was built with the capability to have single sign-on available, we are able to use single sign-on. And what does this mean? This means that we can use the various accounts that we have from different identity services or different applications and platforms, etc. And we can use that to sign into multiple accounts without having to create a new local account for each application and then sign in. Think back couple of years ago, you had like 50 accounts because if you are shopping online at 10 different companies, you had 10 different unique accounts that you had to create on each platform. You had to know the password, the username, the email address that you used for each of those accounts versus with single sign on. Now, if you have 10 different shopping apps, you are likely just using either your Google account to sign in. You are using maybe your Apple ID to sign in, or you're using your Microsoft account or your Facebook account or whichever account that you have that's most prominent for you, but you're using that account as an option rather than creating a new unique different account on each platform. There are secure and insecure use cases for doing like kind of personal and work differences, which we can get into in another video, but this enabled the rapid evolution of a single sign on for us. And then of course, with this, we are saving on the ability for repeated passwords across the stack. Your identity provider is no longer within the application. So the risk of managing and maintaining the identities is no longer within the application. It's purely with the identity provider itself. And then of course, it is the user benefit of not having to sign into multiple applications. It's like when you're at work a couple of years ago at work, we would be working 
working on our computers and you have multiple apps let's say you're in financing you have multiple apps that you're working on and for each of those apps you had to re-sign in re-authenticate the whole time you had to have your password and this is why people use the same password across 10 different apps because it was just super inconvenient with single sign on it removed that kind of overhead for you to have to sign into each application so this really was a identity based evolution to bring in the concept of single sign on the concept of tokenization and modern authentication in the space not only with intra id but i would say across the technology industry right because today single sign on is pretty much the norm across every provider across every platform i mean if you onboard to something and someone doesn't have single sign on that's kind of annoying then with intra id we already talked about the hybrid support so now it was the support for cloud first or cloud managed identities as well as on-premise identities so that seamless kind of pass through of authentication and then we also look into the advancements right so intra id introduced the ability to have more security enhancements like using multi-factor authentication using things like RBAC role-based access control so this is basically what we tried to manage before with the group policies that we had on Active Directory but those were kind of more manually managed now we can or or if you was like one of those super duper engineers which I know one of them it was managed with running PowerShell script and then you add these users remove these users add the permissions blah, blah, blah. but it was still a thing now intra id kind of has really moved and shifted to help us clean this up help us centralize this management help us to automate this a little bit more with the evolution of cloud but also there are more enhanced security features like conditional access conditional access telling us that if your device is connecting from a certain country and our company doesn't operate in in that country maybe flag this device maybe ask you are you sure you want to connect from here maybe block your device completely because it is a foreign country and we don't know so you have to call the support desk to really verify that it's you or if you are sitting in that different country and we've never you know we've never seen your device there then prompt you for additional security like prompt you for multi-factor authentication and ask you a couple of questions this happens automatically when you configure your conditional access policies and these policies are powerful you know so intra id introduced a new way of managing the identity landscape with moving to cloud we saw a neglect of the network access granularity again think a couple of years back when you had to work from home either you had to use your cisco AnyConnect vpn or your forty client or whichever one you we're using or we had something like zpa for a private access tunnel or something like that i mean that's still very very viable today but you could not get access to on-prem resources for the purpose that they were on-prem now today unless someone closes off access from your infrastructure to the internet which we see very many security hygiene issues in the cloud you know your platform is available your assets are available and you're using users can likely connect to your applications etc if, if it's exposed whether in a secure or an insecure way and so with this we really saw the expansion of the network you know the network went a little bit less granular and we saw the explosion of the need for security on the identity and this is what the huge growth and enablement that intra id has had now we have additional capabilities like privileged access we have the the private access gateways we have access reviews and access control logs we have you know this with device management policies etc but it's been a total evolution of technology and all this to say that there is still kind of the confusion of active directory and intra id so no these are not the same they use very different protocols the authentication types is very different it's different platforms but can they talk to each other and can they work together with each other 
other yes they can and the one does enable the other one all right so let's talk a little bit about why intra was actually built it was really to solve the need for identity management in the cloud era fortunately as organizations began really moving to the cloud the traditional on-prem identity solutions like active directory just were not sufficient anymore and so this introduced the need for the advancement of intra id when we think intra we do think cloud-based services because that really is the thing so if you think microsoft 365 managing your identities across cloud native SaaS, PaaS, and is services then you think intra id if you think of the remote workforce you think intra id if you think of growing security concerns with people nomading and working from anywhere in the world and you really need a better way to verify and to monitor people's identity and access then that really comes down to the purpose of intra id i think it's one of the most robust identity-based solutions and intra id i would say first started off as again another kind of authentication platform and directory service that enabled modern authentication multi-factor authentication single sign-on and those things and then that rapidly evolved into a privileged access management platform into a privileged information and privileged identity management platform and so with this really giving people like cyber art and what's the other one from beyond trust sale point a run for their money if you're using intra id today you'll really acknowledge that the landscape and the requirement for identity security has evolved into like if you're working in the identity space you're almost by default working in the security space right because the two goes in together and if the identity is compromised it's such a big compromise in the organization as a whole with that the camera died while i was trying to let you know to join the community if you have not check out all the links in my bio and i'll catch you in the next one bye